Hi there everyone, it's Joe, and before we get started on this deck profile, I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing me talk about this now, but please don't forget to check out X-Burst, which is the first Final Fantasy TCG convention being held in Chatham in a couple of weeks' time. I'll leave a link in the description box below for the link so that you can go and find out where it is, so you can get tickets, etc, etc. I'm hoping to be there, and it'll be really cool to meet some of you guys, so do check that out. Okay, now that that's done and out of the way, I wanted to make a deck profile on each of the elements individually because I made a deck profile not so long ago for Mono Water as that was becoming really popular. But now all of the elements are kind of able to stand on their own as monocolored decks and I think that that's really cool. And my, one of my favourite elements in this game is wind. So I wanted to do wind before I did any of the others because I think that it's suddenly becoming really, really popular and really good for a good reason. Um, the US Nationals winner uh, made a deck that was wind ice in all fairness, it wasn't mono wind, but it very much revolved around a lot of wind's mechanics. And this deck is actually very, very different to that one. So the reason, one of the other reasons I wanted to make this is to show the diversity of things that you can make when it comes to this game. And it's one of my favorite things about it. There's so many good cards in the game that it's very diverse as a meta. And it goes to show that like player skill comes into play just as much as deck build does, as opposed to a few other games I've played where the skill is in the deck build. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I like kind of the player interaction skill as opposed to the deck building skill and having them kind of marry into one thing. But yes, enough of me going on about that. Here is the mono wind list and if you wanted to check out how each of the cards functions then stay tuned and keep on watching. Okay, so we're going to jump in with the forwards first off. And one of the stars of the show of this deck is Bartz. And this is Hero Bartz from Opus 1. Back uh, nearly last year now, which is scary to think how long I've been doing videos for this game, uh, I said that Bartz was a card to look out for in the future. And there's a very good reason for that, is because in a mono wind deck, he, his EX burst and himself when he comes into play does so much for you. He's essentially late game a free 9k guy. And that's really, really strong, especially in conjunction with some of the other units in this deck that kind of dull themselves for traditional effects like Ishtola and Balthea, who are also mainstays in this deck. So three of this Bart's kind of goes without saying. He's extremely good. And we've even got a copy of the Legend Bart's later, which we'll get to, but honestly, I really love this card and I think it's extremely powerful. And then we're going with three copies of Windrake. Windrake is a card that I really, really, really enjoy playing. And a couple of people I spoke to said that they didn't like it. I am a massive fan of this card. It's on curve at 3 CP for 7k. And it has an ability that has so many different uses, it's amazing. Like, you don't have to use it. This is something that people seem to forget. Is that you don't have to use it if you don't need to. So what you can do is, I mean, the combo capabilities of this card are great. You can use it in conjunction with Zidane, or you can use it in conjunction with Barbariccia, as we get to those a bit later, so that you kind of have a really, really nice kind of hand removal, feel removal suite, all, all in this one card that you can just keep repeating, because obviously Windrake bounces himself as well. Or you can use it as a defensive play. Your opponent plays Shantotto, I'll have two of my guys back so that they don't die. Your guy plays uh, Barhammer, you just go, I'll just lift one of the guys and my Windrake. It's, it's amazing in kind of dodging what your opponent wants to do, which is a very, very big thing that Wind does, and it does it very, very well. And then we go with three copies of Seven, and very much for the same reason as Windrake, actually. You know, Seven is the only Type Zero unit in this deck, but she is she herself is unblockable by anything that's 4 CP or greater, and her S ability can put the fear of God in your opponent. Being able to cancel a Shantotto, or cancel some massive ability that your opponent is trying to play, that you you just don't want to happen is just enough if it is enough reason to have her in this deck and you're going to want three of her for obvious reasons you could run asura if you wanted to like pull copies of her back i chose not to but that's an option that is available to you i've also gone with three copies of balthea mainly because i think this balthea is amazing i think that it's um, like the way that i've built this wind deck he has to be here he has the S ability, and there's four copies of Balthier in this deck rather than three. He has an S ability that protects himself and makes him stronger in combat. He has, um, a, and his dull ability to deal 2,000 damage to something is actually very, very good in here because there's so many ways that you can kind of reactivate him, use him again. You have uh, combo capabilities with the Opus 2 Riku and Geomancer and Ishtola. Like, you just rack up damage really, really fast. I mean, if your opponent has Minwu out, that can be a problem, or something akin to Minwu, like Larsa. It can be a problem for this kind of thing, but um, I've been experimenting with kind of these chip damage builds more recently, having had success with my Fire Lightning Cadet build that I posted last week. And so I actually found they're actually very successful. And so if you haven't tried anything like this before, I would encourage you to do so. 
I've also gone with three copies of Dorgan. Dorgan is just amazing. Some people only run two Dorgan, and I understand why, because it's something that doesn't have an S ability, you don't necessarily need him all the time. However, whenever I've played Dorgan, there has never been a time where I didn't want him in my hand. Like, if I ever draw him, I'm always happy to see him. So I figured, that makes sense, I'll run three. I'm going with three copies of Barbariccia because, in, again, in combination with a lot of things in this deck, she just absolutely ruins things. And she actually is a method of getting around things like Minwu and Larsa for the guys that deal damage, like Ishtola and Balfia. Because if they've got, only got a thousand power, any damage you deal to them is going to exceed their limit. So it's going to kill them. And that's fantastic. You can, you can also play Barbariccia as a bluff play so that after your opponent has um, blocked something you've, pl you've attacked with, you can then, because the damage sticks to them until the end of the turn, you can then play Barbariccia, and then the damage they've taken will over, will go over their power and therefore kill them. So you can kind of, it's not the ideal situation, but it is something you can do and something worth bearing in mind, because it could save you. And then three copies of Stola. There's a lot of three offs in this deck because it's a very, very simple deck actually to play. And it's just very, and I wanted to keep the consistency as high as possible. Ishtola in here can do monstrous things. Um, if, you've, if your opponent has no way out of being able to resist damage, then you can board wipe your opponent with Ishtola if you're really careful and you use things like um, uh, Baralai or you, you, ways of activating your cards like Bart, as I mentioned earlier and she can just do so much damage so fast and it's really really scary and really great for a 2 CP unit as well you know if your opponent doesn't have an answer to her you can still attack with her you know that's something that makes her really really strong she's quite easy to kill but she's 2 CP and she has no other she doesn't need any kind of external means other than the CP you can provide her so I just think that she's very very good especially in a deck like this that runs Barbariccia and Balfia and then two copies of Zidane I really like Sedan, but it's not a card that I would want to see all the time because there's no other hand discard or anything like that in this deck. But he works wonders with Windrake. Like you can, and being able to see your opponent's hand is an invaluable resource. Bearing in mind that obviously you're not going to be discarding that much from the hand, Zidane is the only way for you to do that. You can really kind of just scope your opponent out, know what you can and can't do, know what what your opponent might be planning for their next turn. It's just you know looking at their hand is almost as valuable as discarding a card from it. However, obviously dropping a card from it is also amazing and therefore you're gonna run the sedan over, say, Sid Polentina, who all he does is look at their hand. <laughs> and then we're going with two with one copy, sorry, of Legendary Bots. I know it's strange to run a Legendary Bots when we're already running three of the Hero one, but you would be surprised how many times, I didn't play this when I initially built the deck, but when I played this enough, the amount of times where I thought, like, where I realized that I'd accumulated a massive board and then just gone, oh, okay, Bart's attack twice, I win. It's really, really great. And I, you know, Bart was a card, this Bart was a card I wrote off when I got Opus 3, and I didn't think it was all that great. But it turns out he's actually pretty amazing. If you get those the, the, the five jobs on him, you can wreck your opponent's face really fast. And because of things like Windrake, it's a really cheeky play actually to play Windrake on your Bart's or your hero bars because you've already kind of gotten what you needed to out of him if you if you don't need him anymore then play this bar so that we, while you've got the ability to play him with all of his abilities and just smack your opponent really fast and hard it's really cheeky and really really fun and then you know we've also got a single copy of the three drop balthia as a search for fran and this balthia is primarily used as s fodder for the other balthia but again, it's something that you can play down, return back with Windrake or Valifor, and then play the other Balthia. You know, the, because of the ability to return things to your hand quite so frequently, it's not so bad having to like play extra copies of things that you already have. And then lastly, there's a copy of Feral Chaos, because I think that, again, because we're playing extra copies of things like Balthia, things like Barbariccia, things like that, you, they're stuff that have come into play effects, so you might not want them to stick around, and you may not have a Windrake. And Feral Chaos is just a surprise I'm gonna hit you hard. And then, it, you know, he benefits from Maria in this deck where in other monocolored decks he doesn't benefit from the power booster. So having that available to you is also very, very viable. And as a, if your opponent's on six damage, you can just play a Feral Chaos and win. It's that simple. And I really like him for that ability alone. And then obviously being having to kill your guys and backups as, and such isn't that big of a deal in this particular deck. Moving into the backups now, the first backup for any win deck, in my opinion, is probably Archer. Especially in a deck like this where Minwoo can kind of hamper you a little bit. 
having Archer down, no one really runs protection against things like Archer anymore, like Yagrosh. So you're pretty safe to run Archer, and then we probably won't provide that much of a problem for you in the end anyway. I know it's a card that comes up in conversation quite a lot, but it is one of the first things that people have to bear in mind when playing a deck that does chip damage like this, or the Fire Lightning Cadet deck. So, I mean, three copies of Archer is a two CP unit that can remove itself for an effect that benefits you greatly. It just goes in here straight away. Now, one thing that I think that a lot of people might not agree with me on here is running two copies of both Aerith. And the reason that I've done that is um, I want the ability to be able to be matchup dependent. There are some matchups where Legendary Aerith from Opus 3 is far more usable than Opus 1 Rare Aerith. Like, you know, you want to be able to protect yourself from Robans or Red Mages or that kind of thing then you're going to want things like that. So against Earth or Fire, you're probably going to want to have this this Aerith out as opposed to the other one. However, in decks that don't really care about that kind of thing and don't use their backups on you very often, Legendary Aerith is kind of useless. So things like Ice or um, you know Opposing Wind decks, things like that, at which point you're going to want to have that or the other, or Lightning particularly, you're going to want to have Opus 1 Aerith because being able to give your guys you know, essentially hexproof or untargetability is very, very good. And obviously being able to activate all of your all of your forwards is very, very useful. I think that Opus 1 Aerith is generally more useful in a great, a wider number of situations, but in the situations that she is very useful, the legendary Aerith from Opus 3 is mandatory. So I think having the option to have both, because bear in mind that Opus 1 Aerith has an S ability as well, so having the extra Aerith to be able to drop off is actually very useful anyway. So, I mean, if you didn't want to run four Aerith and you just wanted to stick with one or the other, then you could run extra Evokers or, you know, extra Rikus. You could run the Mill Riku, which I'm not running here. You know, there are options here, but I'm explaining my option, you know, my reasons for what I'm running. And you may not agree with me, and that's cool. And then <laughs> we're going with two copies of Evoker because it's a mono win deck, and honestly, wins backups generally, there are some really, really good ones, and there are some really, really not so good ones and Evoker kind of just fits nicely. And then one thing I've actually missed, and I've realised that now, is three copies of Maria, who is one of the most important cards in a wind deck. <laughs> We're going with three copies of Maria, which is kind of self-explanatory, because all of your forwards get a thousand power, it just works. And Feral Chaos getting a buff out of it is also icing on the cake, and it just, it's very, very nice, and you should always run at least two copies of Maria whenever you're running any wind deck. And I like having a power, like three of any power booster in a monocolor deck, so three Maria kind of goes in here. If anything, it's actually slightly weaker than it is in most decks because it's a four CP uh, backup, not a three CP one like the others, and it only gets you the slight extra benefit of giving you Feral Chaos. But it's worth having that anyway. And then two copies of Opus 2 Riku. This is primarily to benefit Balthier and Ishtola. Um, you know, you can like kind of go all out, then play a Riku, and you know, activate all of your guys. That's that's another reason. But the primary reason is because you can have a combo with Balthia using this Riku, and it's an interesting ruling, and it's one I've had to kind of argue with people a few times. Uh, primarily Yu-Gi-Oh, ex yu gi -Oh players, because the way the stack works in this game is similar to Magic, not Yu-Gi-Oh. Once you know, for, so I'll tell you what the play is. You can use Balthia and deal something two thousand. Then you can play Riku have um, Balthier's effect, like natural effect to activate when you play a backup come up and then um, in response and then you kind of respond to Riku's EX ability by dulling Balthier and dealing another 2000 damage. So you know, the, once the chain has started, there is no chain in this game. When a chain in Yu-Gi-Oh resolves it doesn't stop until it's finished resolving. Whereas in Magic you can interrupt it and the same is applied here. So basically, you can use a Riku to have Balthia deal 6,000 damage to something instead of 4 that you would have normally gotten from a different backup. So that's it's a really good play, and it's something that I wanted to include in this deck because I wanted people to know that you could do that. Like, you can deal the extra 2,000 damage with Balthia because he'll end up activated at the end of the combo. So you could deal an extra 2k damage or attack with him if you wanted to. And then uh, one copy of Fran, because again, she benefits Balthia and she's a search target for the 3-drop. And it means that there is a search card in this deck by having the Balthia, which allows you to shuffle your deck if you've mulliganed your hand so that, it doesn't com so that there's cards you don't go, oh god, I'm never going to see those again. And then one copy of Barrelai, again, primarily to benefit um, Balthia and Ishtola. It's, it, it's also very useful anyway, like if your opponent's attacking you and you're in like war, it's a counter to ice decks quite nicely. I mean, this deck acts, you know, in testing, this deck rinses ice decks. Like, you do all your dulling and freezing effects and stuff, I don't care. Every time you try and do something, you know, I can get um, Bart's or Riku EX bursts, which there aren't many EX bursts in the deck, but those ones are useful in that matchup. And you can just, you know, you make sure that you just can't really be affected by dull and freeze. It's really quite nice, actually. 
And then Baroli kind of augments that. And then Geomancer, again, pretty much only in the deck to benefit Balthia and Ishtola. You know, you probably only really want to run this card. You could you could easily drop this out. You could run Oracle, which can activate all of your characters, but it has a cost unlike Baroli, which gets a weaker effect for no cost. But there's lots and lots of options that you can run in this deck. It's actually very malleable. You know, you, know, you could go differently to what I've done and you could run similarly to the US Nats winning deck which I'll leave a link to in the description box if you want to have a look at that from fftcgmognet.com and you know he runs all the, the chocobos which is brilliant yeah when I saw the deck I was like oh my god this deck is amazing and I have to try it and it is very very good so I mean if you wanted to try something different then try running the chocobo engine but you know running your Zana to search any chocobos and alongside Windrake so you can keep repeating it that's also really cool so there's lots of things that you can do with this deck and it's very very malleable and catered to your needs. So the last thing we're going to go over is the summons and summons in Wind are a bit weird like there's not many that you can really do a lot with. Two copies of Alifor are in this deck because I like having a board wipe available to me at all times. Like a lot of people don't particularly like Valifor, I think it's very useful. This deck isn't meant to be super aggro, super fast, and, but it has a lot of come into play effects like Zidane and Barbariccia. So you can get away with using, and Bart, so you can get away with using extra versions of those characters by putting them back in your hand while making your opponent have to pay for their cards again. I really like Valifor and I always have since Opus 1. And then two copies of Shem Hazai because there are enough cheap cards in this deck. Seven, Ishtola, uh, three drop Barts, three drop Balthia, there's Windrake. There's plenty of cheaper cards in this deck to you to benefit from this. However, you could easily drop this or the la the, the other um, summon in this deck, Diablos, for Sylph if you wanted to so that you have a bit more combat trick kind of orientation within the deck. But I quite like having Shem Hazai there because I think just having the threat of a card of all of your guys becoming unblockable is enough of a reason to run the card. And then, as I said, two copies of Diablos because you actually build up your board very quickly in this deck because you can, you know, reactivate your backups, use them again, you know, pick stuff up, play it again, keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. And you end up with five backups and loads of guys really quickly. So Diablos can actually do a decent chunk of damage. You're very rarely going to benefit from um, the second part of it because it's only seven that you actually get anything out of it from. But, um, you know, it, it's just, it's a damage spell and it can kill things and it's a lot, lot more ver versatile than, say, Alexander, which I really don't particularly like. And you, but you could run Sylph if you wanted to instead of this as an option. And then lastly, I've gone with a copy of Zodiac because Zodiac has become very, very popular of late. I mean, I, I haven't done a monthly review for this month or anything like that because I'm naughty and sue me. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think that Zodiac is a big riser on, you know, in, in Final Fantasy TCG and I think it's been doing very, very well. And having tested it, it performs best in a deck where you can accumulate lots of guys very quickly. And so a deck like this is a perfect fit for it. And, you know, seeing as you have Feral Chaos in the deck as well, the, you know, you can get it so that it's cheaper, but that's not necessarily the reason that you're doing it. And that's uh, all of the cards that we have in this deck. So, and I will be going to eat eggs burst again in a couple of weeks with any luck and we always hopefully we'll have some news coming up in the next couple of weeks as well and thank you all very very much for watching subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you have thank you very much and i hope you've enjoyed all the videos that i've been posting recently and you can stay tuned for the next videos coming up soon so thank you again and i'll speak to you guys soon bye